So we're now going to explore how to paint these clouds in such a way that they change size automatically. Right, so just as a recap, I, I had created a whole bunch of uh, cloud uh, brushes and then collected them all into a single uh, animated brush. So here is uh, showing the film strip of this animated brush with uh, seven or eight uh, images. And uh, what I want to do now is to paint them but in such a way that they automatically get smaller uh, at a particular portion of the image which should be representing perhaps the distant parts of it, like in the sky far away. And when they get closer, they should get bigger. right? And so that's a new feature in version 10 of PD Howler. And uh, that feature is essentially uh, something you see down here on the, um, the sidebar if you if you look at let's see I have a well normally you have the color swatch open you can close that you have the layers um, you let's go and close those that so we see the bottom parts down here let me go close these uh, brushes okay so down at the bottom here you have the grids section <clears throat> and in the grids there is uh, there's the rulers we've had these for a while drawing grid um, and also uh, art artist guides and there is a new option here called the Z-Scale Guide, right? And so it's basically a, a scaling based on the Z, like the depth. It's not really a depth, but it's, well, it's kind of that. Um, the depth in uh, in the image map, which is uh, called the swap image, right? So let's say we have, we go to the swap image. We click here, <coughs> turn uh, to the swap image. I currently have some other image here. Let's go clo clear that. And you can tell up here, oh no, I'm actually on the main image right now. So let's go switch back there now. So that's the swap image right now. And I'm going to um, to put a gradient in there, something like this. So right click on the gradient tool and put the linear gradient. Let's select the gradients, uh, just black to white, right? Dark to bright. And I'm going to go from the bottom where it's dark going up to the top, right? So something like this is a gradient that transitions from a dark value to a bright value, from black to white. What we will do is we will use that as a cue to indicate how much scaling to apply to the brush, right? So we'll, we'll switch back to the main image now. And uh, we know down there, there, behind this, there is a swap image containing a transition a gradient from black to white. And when we enable this here, uh, or before we do that, let's go first back to the to the brush and make sure we see the brush here. Make sure you turn the, the preview on. You see that the brush is always the same size. And as you paint with it, all these clouds are appearing at full size. However, let's go erase this and let's go to the Z scale guide turn that on, now you see that it's scaling it automatically based on that grayscale image from the swap image. Right? So you can paint here, it's large. You can paint down there, it's small. Now the other things you want to do is have uh, the distance between these clouds adjust. Right? So for that you need to go to the settings and in the settings, let's go pin this down, I think it was already, there you go. Um, in the settings you have a step distance you can adjust here and normally it's not in relative mode so the step distance is the same regardless of how big that that brush is which works okay for the upper area here but then when you go down here when the brush when the clouds are so much smaller you would probably want them closer together as well so what you need to do is check the relative box so it's relative to the size right and in that way the big ones will be appearing at uh, a big step distance and as you get closer they come closer together as well. Now that might be too much of a step distance so adjust that a little bit here and then so you have now the clouds coming big together and as they get smaller they come closer together. All right? Usually we'll paint that from far away to close. So you start at the bottom here and then you just paint like this and in no time you have half of the uh, the sky painted. See something like this. So you can you can easily um, just plaster all over the place here and have a, a couple of small clouds appearing and, and really the type of image you have in that cloud will also have a big influence on how good that sky looks, right, obviously. Um, but there is there's a lot of value in just having that automatic scaling based on the swap image.
Now, in this case, we are under the clouds. You can also see that work uh, over the clouds, right? So let's say, for instance, we, we draw the, um, let's go and invert, you know, vertically flip this image from the swap. Uh, let's go to flip vertical, right? Or, or even just to redefine the, uh, the, the gradient. Let's go right click. Uh, linear gradient and this time we want to do a uh, kind of at the middle of the picture have the horizon there so we go from black to white down to the bottom all right something like this okay and um, you can now switch back to the main image and your brush will now scale to be big at the bottom and kind of slow towards the horizon Right. You can, by the way, you can see that gradient at the same time. If you just click here on the big icon to enable layer mixing, that will show you the image that's also in the swap image. Right? That will show you the swap image at the same time as uh, painting here on top. So you can uh, you can paint it right there. Um, and never mind the fact that it's looking dark; it will go away when you stop the blending. Right here, it is. You have the the clouds. Um, as if you're looking like flying over the clouds and you have a view o above the clouds there. Now <clears throat> there's uh, many other ways to use that. That gradient uh, that you have in the in the swap image, uh, it doesn't have to be a gradient just like that. It can be you know any sort of patterns. Um, you could have, uh, let's say for instance you, you draw a, you render a, uh, a checkerboard, yeah, something like this big one, big checkerboard, and you go from bright to dark, right? So uh, anything like that, um, as, a, as a checkerboard, you see as you move the brush across it here, you have a, an area where it's probably over the black area. Let's go see that. See when it's over, when you're placed over the dark area of the checkerboard, the brush is small, right? And as you, you paint small ones. And then as you go over the big ones here, you have, you have some big brushes appearing. So there's all sorts of funky stuff you can do with that. Uh, perhaps one of the most uh, memorable or uh, important ones also is uh, painting trees uh, of different sizes. All right, so let's see if we have a, a very easy tree image we can grab um, as a custom. You know what, I don't know where <coughs> I have them. So I'll, I'll just paint one, uh, a new one. So I'm going to go to the foliage brushes and just create some sort of a tree um, tree image. Let's go turn this brush off for now. Um, <clears throat> plain, plain old tree. Where do we have our generic trees? Trees, trees, trees. Evergreens. There's so many there to choose from. Shrubberies. Or oh, some willow trees. Yeah, let's grab one of those. Now that one's a small one, that one's a small one, and that one's a big one. So depending on where you hit it, that also will be scaled differently. All right? So the, the particle brushes, the foliage brushes, they all have now the ability to be scaled automatically based on the uh, gradient that you have, or based on the image you have in the swap. So you see here I'm hitting a couple of the small ones and then suddenly I'm hitting a couple of the big areas. You can tell that if I enable that. See, right? if I'm painting here, this is the bright ones, the scale is up. If I paint here, these are the dark parts, the scale is down. All right. So uh, same thing here, therefore, if you, if you use that with a gradient approach. If you, if you paint in the swap image, right? if you go to the swap image here and simply load a gradient of uh, something like, uh, let's say, linear gradient, and you paint something like this, actually the other way around. Far away would be small trees, close would be bright trees, so you, uh, big trees, so you need that to be something like this. Now, as you paint and switch back to the main, <coughs> now as you erase this, <coughs> if, you, if you want to guide, you, you want to see the swap image here at the same time, you can. Um, you can see here it's going to be big trees. Oops, wait, I need to enable the <coughs> the um, that uh, brush again. Um, let's do the windblown tree. So here is here are some big ones, 
and then back there they're getting smaller and smaller. All right, so that's that's the technique with this. You essentially have a um, a very easy way to change the scale, change the size of the uh, brushes based on an image that you don't have to see, but you know is there in the swap image. So you can <coughs> you can paint a couple of small trees back there, and as you come closer to the scene, <coughs> to the front of the scene, they automatically get bigger. All right, and really that's that's now possible because we added this uh, tiny little detail right here under particles. If you look at uh, the the particle brushes, there is now a scale. If you look on the foliage, there is a scale as well. And so these these parameters um, can now. I'm not sure if we have that for this one here, um, <coughs> or for for the orbitals. Uh, but certainly for, for foliage and for particles, uh, there is an automatic scale possible because we have sort of exposed that overall scale parameter. And so when you have um, particles of any type, you know, if, if it's, for instance, if it's the, uh, the, the baddy grass or if it's the trees too, see that's, that's a big tree and then farther away there it's a small tree, right? So the scale automatically adjusts based on that uh, <coughs> swap image, based on the image, based on the gradient in the swap image. And <coughs> that's uh, simply enabled right here with this checkbox, Z-Scale Guide. So the swap image acts as a guide for the Z-Scaling, for uh, like the, the distance in the Z-axis is becoming the scale controller. <coughs> so, all right, hopefully that will give you some great ideas on how to uh, quickly paint some backdrops, uh, clouds, uh, trees on top of mountains, uh, you know, landscapes that disappear in the far distance. All of that can easily be achieved with this particular feature. All right, thanks uh, for watching. We'll see you next time.